So a part of our neurology conference and over here, we will be dealing with the important topic today, which is the neural crust and the effects of the abnormal migration of the neural crust. That is the neurocrystopathies. So as far as this topic is concerned, uh, there are some latest developments, research is going on in this field, and we will be discussing in depth about the neural crust and the abnormalities, which we give the name as neurocrystopathies. So as far as the general organization of the nervous system is concerned, we are well aware of the sensory nerve system, the motor nerve system, and the integration at the highest level by the cerebrum and the cerebellum and some cranial nucleus. So this chart beautifully depicts the general organization of the nervous system. But more important than that is how the nervous system develops. So as far as the development of the nervous system is concerned, in this figure we very well see the neural plate, the neural groove, the neural crust, and the neural tube, as well as the further differentiation of the neural tube. So as far as the neural crust is concerned, we see that early development of the neural system starts in the third week of intraembryonic life. And this neural plate is formed, and there is the neural groove, which is further formed by the deepening of the neural plate, and then the neural folds, which deepen further, and the neural folds fuse together, converting the neural groove into the neural tube. So the neural tube has a cranial end, and it has a caudal end, and then we have the two neuropores, the anterior neuropore and the posterior neuropore, which fuse or close. And then abnormality of the closure can lead to various developmental defects, which we will be discussing elsewhere. So over here, as we are concerned, we have this important thing. So we have the neural crust cells, which lie on the sides of the neural tube, and they are not a single mass of cells. They are a very specialized mass of cells, and they develop into two parts. One is the ventral cell mass, and another is the dorsal cell mass. But basically, what are neural crust cells? They are specialized cells, and they are derived from a layer which is given the name as ectoderm. To be more specific, the neuroectoderm. We are well aware of gastrulation, the development of the germ layers. I mean to say endoderm, ectoderm, and the mesoderm, and then the mesoderm forms the intraembryonic mesoderm and the extraembryonic mesoderm. But over here, we're specifically concerned with the neural crust cells. So, as far as the neural crust cells are concerned, we have the dorsal cell mass and the ventral cell mass, and these give rise to distinctive uh, elements. That means from the neural crust, neural crust is something like pluripotent. That is, many many structures develop from the neural crust. That is why it is very important. Four things are important in embryonic life. That is the germ layers, the ectoderm, the endoderm, the mesoderm, and the neural crust, and the dorsal cell mass, and the ventral cell mass. So as far as the dorsal cell mass is concerned, what develops from the dorsal cell mass is the dorsal root ganglia of spinal nerves, as well as the sensory ganglia of the fifth, seventh, ninth, and the tenth cranial nerves. In addition, there are the specialized cells like the neuroblasts, the spongioblasts, and some of the cells of the skin like the melanoblasts, and in the teeth, the odontoblasts, and the cartilaginous cells of the branchial arches. So what we see in nutshell is that we see so many structures developing from the neural crust cells. These are just like the stars scattered in the sky. And in addition to that, the ventral mass of cells converts into chromaffin system as well as the argentifin cells and other parts of the argentifin system or the chromaffin system like the paraotic bodies and the adrenal medulla, but not the adrenal cortex. In addition, we have the amine precursor uptake decarboxylation system, APER cells, uh, which develop from the neural crest. So as far as these things are concerned, uh, it does not end only here. Then after that, we have the, I mean to say, other uh, elements which develop, like the arachnoid and the pia matter, the leptomeninges. Uh, I have mentioned some of the things like the sensory ganglia, sympathetic chain, uh, chain, and the swan cells, the glial cells, and the dermis of the face and the skin. In addition, we have the odontoblast, the C cells of the thyroid, the co septum of the heart, and the connective tissue of the face and the skull. 
So these are all important structures which develop from the neural crust. Now in addition now, we have got what can go wrong. You know, embryogenesis is a very specific process, especially the development of the nervous system. And there are these trans molecules, the signal molecules, the physiological substances, the genes, which help in the normal migration of the cells. And as far as the neural crust cells are concerned, they migrate to many, many different locations, as I told you. So what can happen? Sometimes abnormalities can occur. And as a result of malfunction of the genes, like the red gene, like the GDNF, the SOX10, PCOF1, POLRI, D uh, uh, one and Polric one uh, that uh, see uh, these are the various genes which are implicated in the process of migration of neural crust cells and in case there is a mutation in these genes there is some abnormality in the uh, signal molecules wrong signals can go and that can disrupt the entire migration process so what can happen as a result of abnormal migration of the neural crust cells so say for example what are the diseases so abnormal migration of the neural crust cells causes certain diseases which will give the name of its neurocrystopathies and a lot of lot of research is going on the neurocrystopathies what is the path in addition to certain other causes what are the paths what happened during embryogenesis so that these set of disorders come into existence and we are well aware once we teach anatomy once we teach uh, i mean to say other aspects of anatomy like the embryology or we go further higher up and teach pediatrics and neonatology or oncology we get across a spectrum of diseases and how are they related the Hirschsprung's disease the treacher collins syndrome the cash 22 syndrome neuroblastoma men 2a multiple endocrine neoplasia 2a sturge weber syndrome nfm neurofibromatosis 1 so these are the disease conditions in which there is abnormal migration of neural crust cells. Now, we will be taking certain specific disorders because we cannot take all of them. And what is important, we take the first of them, and it is the Hirschsprung's disease, which is as a result of abnormality of the red gene, the GDNF and SOX10. And what is the basic cause of Hirschsprung's disease? There is the absence of ganglion cells in the myentric plexus. I mean to say we are well aware of the nerve plexus of the GIT and that is the orbux plexus and the meistus plexus which do not develop well. There are agganglionic uh, segments in the colon and as a result of which the nerve supply is not there. As a result of which there is congenital megacolon. The colon gets enlarged and agganglionosis is seen on biopsy. So if you do a histopathological examination of the uh, patients of the neonates with Hirschsprung's disease, they will present with absence of ganglionosis, what we call as agganglionosis. So this is very important as far as the abnormal migration of the neural crest cells to this part, I mean to say the nerve plexus of the gastrointestinal tract is concerned. So this is one important disease condition which the neonatologists come across in their uh, life. And another thing is that we have got, once we study R syndromes, we have got the treacher collins syndrome, the R syndrome, and we have got these genes which I just enumerated just now, and there is the abnormal formation of pharyngeal arches due to faulty migration of neural crust cells. Here I am not discussing any other factor other than the abnormal migration of neural crust cells. Patients usually present with features. I will not go into much of the spectrum of these patients present, like the hypoplasia of the zygomatic bone, the hyperplasia of the mandible, I mean to say mandibular hyperplasia, zygomatic hyperplasia, which means the facial hyperplasia, and the oral anomalies, I mean to say the anomalies of the ear, like the atresia of the external auditory canal, or the stenosis of the canal, and the eye problems, which are ophthalmological uh, spastic C, like the coloboma, and aplasia of lashes, etc. In addition to cleft uh, abnormalities, like the cleft palate, and these patients also have airway problems as a result of mandibular hyperplasia. But what is the issue? This R syndrome is as a result of abnormal migration of the neural crest cells. So that is our topic. And we see that in embryology, we teach this topic. But basically, we are not aware that it is a result of the abnormal migration of the neural crest cells. Now, in addition to that, we have got these diseases which I enumerated uh, before. I mean to say neuroblastoma, which is a pediatric tumor where the adrenal gland gets enlarged and these uh, children get, I mean to say, uh, abnormal swelling 
and they might get metastasis in the brain, in the bones, and that's one condition. And then we have neurofibromatous, in which there are those uh, these neurofibromas scattered all over the skin. So many of them, in addition to, I mean to say, other conditions like multiple endocrine neoplasia syndromes, in which there are malignancies of the parathyroid, thyroid, and the phacromocytomas. I will not go much into that, but the concept over here is that this neurocrystopathy is a very, very important topic, and the neurocrystopathies happen to be, uh, I mean, say, the focus of the research of the scientists lately, and we have to develop more pathways and more understanding of this disease spectrum, and that will be, uh, I mean, say, uh, the responsible people, the scientists, the neurologists, the neuropsychiatrists, the uh, people concerned with the genetic knowledge, they will be doing more for research and focus on the pathways involved in the neurocrystopathies. I hope that this uh, small uh, talk of mine gives you a bit of a prelude about the neurocrystopathies and the neurocrust and its importance. Thanks a lot.